Did gyrate and giggle in the wave. All mimsy were the borogos. And the home rats. I was afraid, but. Beware the jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jump jump bird. And shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the mangsome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree, and stood a while and thought. And as in oofish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tall yew wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through his vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left his head, and with his head he went galumping back. Uh, hast thou slain the jaguar? Come to my arms, my baby you are. Oh, practice day, kalukulay! He chortled in his joy. It was a bird. And the slidey toes did gyre and gimble in the way. All limbs there were the borogos. And the mole rats outweigh. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to start. Yeah. Can I start now? Yeah. We, we may experience a, a bunch of people exiting the theater. Yeah. If the, uh, the finale is happening right now. Is it? But we can hear you, so go ahead. Okay. And if they get noisy for a while, they'll let us go by. Well, that's B. Baldwin, and I want to give her the greatest thanks for offering me this show. I, a year ago, I juried, um, helped jury the Scholastic Art Awards, and I was actually asked to be the keynote speaker. Although at the time, I didn't realize I was volunteering to be the, key, the keynote speaker, but it turned out to work out really well. And so I had already thought of the title to my show, which is Failed Attempts at Greatness. And, uh, B offered me the show and said, I already know the name for it. She said, well, what is it? Failed attempts at greatness. And she looks at me and goes, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and so some people have asked me about the title. And what happened was I was sitting, it was a few years back, and I was sitting around a computer looking at some really you know, great artists. And I thought, you know what? Your work's OK, John, but Basically, they're just failed attempts at greatness. And I, thought, okay. I wrote that down and thought, if I ever have a show, that's the name I'm going to give. And so here's my show. I have a show. Good job. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank, among other people, everyone who was so generous as to let me borrow one of their paintings off of their walls. And, Put it in harm's way. <laughs> I appreciate that. This is also the unveiling for Annie and David's uh, skyscape, the cathedral down here, as well as the little portrait of Jimmy and Carol. That was uh, they. They were going to have a showing in their home, and they got robbed, and so we never got to have an unveiling. So these are these are new. I also want to thank. Let's see, Mark. Bachelor and Bruce Wyland and Dave Piper. They all helped me bring all this work. It was a lot of work. And then Dave and Mark, uh, uh, Bruce helped me hang the show as well as B, of course. And I just stood around and said, Oh, God, where are we going to put this? Cheers. Hey, cheers. <laughs> I have a beer. Cheers. After I finish talking, I intend to have a beer. So I'm very grateful. And my sister Heidi, who is here somewhere, 
She's just an angel. I'd, I'd be, uh, well, we're dearly sheep. I'd be, I'd be washing dishes right now. So you gotta, you gotta be thankful that somebody will allow you to, uh, or help you, uh, get to do what you want to do. I was just gonna talk about a few paintings since I don't really want to talk about me, and I thought I'd start with the the bicycle painting because it has an interesting story. I'm moving too much, right? <laughs> no. Uh, that painting I painted, I used to teach here back in 77. And when I quit, I uh, started that painting, and it was sort of an ode. I love to ride the bicycle. And so that, bi that painting is about my love of the bicycle. And, uh, of course, being a show-off, doing a bicycle trick. And I was going from having employment to uh, trying to make a living as an artist. And if you look at the painting, I'm riding into a storm. <laughs> I, I entered that painting in a show, and I got a call, and, hey, you won third place. And I'm like, all right, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, two days later, I got a call. Well, one of the artists who was rejected was leaving the, the gallery, and his sculpture brushed up against your painting and put a little tear in it. And I was like, um, how bad? <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Maybe, oh, well, you know, like an inch? Yeah, about an inch. And then I hear a voice in the background, and it's an artist who knows me. And he says, let me talk to him. I say, oh, Bill, hey, uh, how bad is that there? Well, it's about three inches. And, oh, <laughs> it looked bad. oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. So, I can bring it back to you. So he brought the painting back to me. Uh, I put an iron-on patch on the back. Mark, are you here? Uh, I got a friend who's an art conservator. He's... Uh, iron that thing on there and touch it up. <laughs> and I go into the show on opening night. I walk in and there's this space on the wall with third place next to it. And I walk up and put my painting on the wall. <laughs> and the artist is like, hey, what? The guy just walks in and he's got third place. <laughs> no, no, no. I, there's a story here. There's a story. So that's, I eventually, though, you can't see the tear anymore because I ended up cutting off like that. It was like an inch from the edge. So I cut off an inch of the upper stretcher bar, the lower stretcher bar, slapped it back together, and wrapped it around the corner, which worked, except my signature then said, on Eric Narum. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't look good. So I, I painted that out and put J.E. Narum. And that's, that's one of the stories I wanted to tell. This is a painting, the one failed attempts I've been asked about as to exactly what's going on here. And, um, this painting, the intention was to complete the painting in three weeks. And three weeks, I was doing airbrush work. Three weeks had passed, and the painting wasn't finished. Four weeks had passed. Still wasn't finished. Five weeks had passed. And I looked down and said, my god, I've got like about three more weeks of work before I'd be happy with this. I'm going to finish this painting today. So how can I do that? <laughs> Okay, so I got a, it was either a single edge razor or a box cutter, and I, I got up to the painting, I said, okay, now, if I were to do something like this, and then I just went, zzzz, and it opened, and I said, hey, finished. <laughs> <laughs> it was really pretty easy. <laughs> and I, I, I did look at it and think, well, maybe that wasn't the best idea. <laughs> but you know, I really like it, so I, I just, I'm satisfied. Let's see, this painting was, uh, is Bunny here? She's here. Yes. She's back that way. This was commissioned by Bunny, and this is probably my most elaborate from a detail standpoint. If you look, you can see every little roof on that. Uh, Bunny had had some health issues. She uh, was able to heal them through her diet, which uh, she wanted to be have represented in the portrait. And uh, I always wanted to do a painting within a painting. So the only place this skyscape exists is in this painting. And I always liked the idea of looking into a room. And this is the way their house is designed. You open the front door and you look into, or you can see into the room through this wall. So that worked perfectly. They had gone to Spain, I guess it was, and had come back with these. They've seen a show of Spanish still life, and they all had these really dark 
walls. And she said, would you mind painting the walls? I said, no, that sounds great. Make the figures stand out. So, and then the owl, I had wanted to, uh, the previous painting I'd done was a man riding a walrus through the Continental Divide, which I really thought was kind of fun. <laughs> and I wanted an animal in this painting, too, and I thought maybe put something right here, you know, but it couldn't be too big, a mountain lion would and she said, how about an owl? I love screech owls. They have this lonely little cry. In fact, I was going to title this lonely little cry, but it would make her seem kind of pathetic. So <laughs> we didn't do that. But uh, to me, the owl represents Peter. Just Peter has always had a big, big bushy mustache, so I thought this is perfect. And uh, that's just a little bit about this. This painting... Uh, I saw the sky in Guanajuato, Mexico, and the foreground was not very interesting. So I saw these trees on Shoal Creek, and uh, this is this is a fun one because there's some faces hidden in here. There's a big beak with a he's a really angry-looking guy here. There's his eye. There's his down. But this guy looks like something out of Doctor Seuss with a big nose and a big moppy head of hair, and uh, I kind of like putting stuff like that. In my Let's see. This is the Martin Springs Aphrodite. And Virginia didn't make it. Virginia has always been one of these beautiful women. And she wanted her painting to have uh, Barton Springs as part of the painting. And so I started thinking, well, wow, Virginia is so pretty. Maybe I should try to make her the Barton Springs Aphrodite. And uh, I said, I need three graces on the shore. And so she, her, her sister Audrey's in the center and two of her dear friends. Okay, we wanted her husband in the painting as well. Aphrodite's favorite mortal lover was the Donis, who was born of a tree. In fact, a wild boar slammed into the tree. The tree splits open. Adonis is born. And uh, then later, Adonis is killed by a boar. <laughs> uh, this doesn't follow through, but I wanted to put a wild boar in here, but um, Virginia didn't want a wild boar in her painting. I, you know, so you try to be accommodating. And uh, I said, how about a wolf? I found this wolf that's kind of like a wild boar, and she said, yeah, that'll, that'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, worst comes, if he gets eaten by a wolf, I'll feel terrible, but uh, that's the story behind that painting. And, um, yeah. Oh, so I'm probably the world's slowest painter. In fact, there's a rumor going around, which is true, that it takes me over three hours to sign a painting. And it's true. Like, some take five, six hours. I'm still I'm not happy with it yet. Oh, no, I don't like that color. I'm going to start over again. So she says, Well, yeah, you can borrow it, but um, I don't think you've borrowed it yet. Oh, surely I've borrowed it. I'm like five, six years ago, I painted it. I go to pick it up, and said, no, I haven't burned it, I haven't even signed the thing yet. She's, she's had it for six years, and I haven't signed it. So, when I return this to her, it will be varnished, and it will have a signature. Five years now. Yeah, well, there's no rush. I've got a few more around here I want to talk about, and then I'll show up. And everybody wants to go on. <laughs> Let me get my cameras in here. Uh, I'm going to talk mainly about, oh, I'll talk about Juan Diego Narunsky, who he is. I, of course, uh, he's me, but it was back in the 80s. I started painting these paintings. In fact, this, if you'll notice, it has my signature on it. But I started doing these works that were abstract in nature. And, and I would tell people I painted this painting, and they would see my skies and say, well, wait a second, That's, they're not at all alike. Well, a dear friend of many of us, Jimmy Jalapino, uh, always, I always loved the fact that he had that pseudonym. I just thought, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. So. Initially, my first choice 
because my neighbor, Gayla Baikovsky Novodvorsky, just beyond Mick there, uh, was this wonderful woman that lived in the house I was living in, I decided I wanted to have a Jewish last name. So I came up with Narumsky. And then I, the first name I came up with was Generic. John Eric Generic Narumsky. I let it That's funny. But then again, generic is not really a name. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very generic name if it is. So, so I was one day, I always thought, you know, I, I paint so tight and I really like detail, but I wish I had the flair of a Spanish painter, you know? And, and so I, uh, I was, these are in the days when people used to do this, I was putting a return address on that envelope. Remember those? <laughs> and uh, I wrote down Juan Diego Narumsky, and I thought, yeah, that's it, Juan Diego. And so I changed it from generic Narumsky to Juan Diego Narumsky, and said, it confuses people, but it's what I did. <laughs> Confuse me. So that, these are Juan Diego. But I did want to talk about this. This is the unveiling party for Annie and David's. This is my most recently completed skyscape. This painting is West Texas. That mountain is called Cathedral. And sadly, as I was painting it, um, their little puppy Daisy escaped on New Year's, but she heard the fireworks and um, she got out and she got hit by a car. And so I wanted to surprise them. And I, I put Daisy in the painting. I can point her out to you if you'd like to see. Would anyone like to see it? Yes. It's obvious. I'm going to point it out. But this is Daisy. Aww. This is me on my back looking at the sky. Aww. Me as a cartoon character. And there's other faces scattered about. And then another tragedy. Their older puppy, Buddy? Buddy, Buddy died too. I mean, why am I running out of places? <laughs> we got Buddy over here. So. They're never going to commission a painting from me again because they like their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, dogs started showing up in all these Juan Di uh, Hercules da Vinci pieces. I, I guess I felt guilty. I'm not sure. But, uh, so when, when I started painting this, David says, I'll leave a lot of sky. I thought, OK, OK. I left this big blue area. And I'm looking, and I go, oh my god, it's imbalanced. It's imbalanced. So I called him up and said, can I put a moon in this painting? Oh, yeah, go ahead. So. That moon really uh, finished the work for me. So, anyway, thank you all so much. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Now one more painting, and then I'm going to stop. Y'all can go ahead and just walk away. If <laughs> okay. This is. Let me get these people. Back, way back, in uh, like mid seventies, I had a neighbor, Gela Baikovsky Novodvorsky. She was the aunt of my landlord, Mr. Novi, and she was this older Jewish woman, ninety-four years old, and we became good friends. She was sort of orthodox. She wouldn't wouldn't do things on Saturday. Hey, what's going on back there? Um, so I would do things for her. I would change light bulbs, and you know, and she would make homemade noodles for me. And uh, I said, "Well, I'm, I really love to paint, Gayla. She's got this really interesting face." So I asked her if I could paint her painting, and she she barely spoke English. <laughs> so I'm down there, I pull my easel down, and I'm painting, and I'm slow. And I, I don't want to show it to her because it's not looking that great. Finally, let me see the picture. Okay, I'll show it. I'll show her the picture. Fair. Not my face. <laughs> Makes me look like an altar buddy, an old grandmother. Makes me look 100 years old. Okay, okay, I'm not about six years. Just give me a minute. <laughs> so I, uh, I paint a little longer. And, she wants to see the picture. Let me see the picture. Okay, I show it to her. <laughs> Not my face. Makes me look a uh, Makes me look like an awful bubby. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm still working on it. Give me some time. So I, 
I got to where I was really pretty happy with it. And uh, she wants to see the picture. I said, okay, okay, I'll show it to you. You can imagine. <laughs> it's not my face. Makes me look 100 years old. Makes me look like an altar bubby. Yeah, yeah. If the people in Europe were to see this painting, they'd vomit. <laughs> what? If the people in Europe were to see this painting, they'd vomit. I said, okay, that's it. I'm not painting anymore. Grab my easel. Grab my stuff. Put it back upstairs. But if there are any Europeans in here, oh, there it is. I've got something for you. <laughs> Don't worry. I've come prepared, and uh, you won't have to worry about making a big C. All right. That's it. I want to thank everybody for coming out. It's been really Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thanks. So